Oh, and so hello everyone and welcome. Uh, my name is Chris Stewart. I'm an operations coordinator here for the MSU Recycling Center. And I want to thank you for joining us today for our September town hall. Uh, with many of us returning to campus for the first time in well over a year. Uh, today is going to be a refresher course and what we're able to recycle at MSU, what changes have happened to our program since COVID hit, how to request a bin for your office now that you're back, and answer all the questions that you may have. Um, as you probably saw from a pop-up that came up, we are streaming live on Facebook. So if you miss a, por miss a portion of today's uh, town hall or you wanna watch a replay later, you can go to our Facebook page to see a recording there, or we will have a recording on our website via YouTube, depending on your streaming preference or drawers. I'm now gonna pass it over to our speaker for today. Uh, he is the recycling coordinator here at MSU, Dave Smith. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to uh, share my screen with you here, so bear with me for just one moment. And you should be seeing it now. So uh, again, welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking today about recycling. First, I wanted to give you just some basics. Uh, campus recycling is managed by the MSU Surplus Store and Recycling Center. Uh, our facility includes the Surplus Store, our Public Recycling Drop-Off Center, our Material Recovery Facility, and our Grow Green Vermicompost Hoop House. Uh, we are located at the South End on campus, uh, just off of Farm Lane, uh, south of Trowbridge Road, and north of the commuter lot, if you're not familiar with where we're at. Um, so recycling, uh, we want to talk to, to you today about recycling because it is a key component of what our mission is. And that mission is to manage MSU's waste as a resource uh, through an integrated system of reuse, recycling, collaboration, and education. So I know one of the questions that you want to know is what happens to your recyclables? Um, well, we here on campus at the Surplus Store and Recycling Center, we collect, we sort it, we bale it, we sell it, and we ship it to um, recycling, uh, ship it as recycling commodities to uh, several regional processors in the area, where they then turn it into uh, recycled material uh, that can replace virgin materials used in the manufacturing process. Our drivers collect about 9 million pounds of material every year. Uh, those um, drivers collect it from on-campus housing locations, academic, uh, farms, um, event venues, and on-campus events, as well as from our public drop-off center. So this is just a quick depiction of how we process materials in our material recovery facility, starting from the upper left. Uh, we receive our materials through either one of our larger, uh, what we call our front load trucks, um, or through our box trucks on curb carts. That material is then tipped onto the uh, material recovery for center, uh, facility center floor. Um, it's then sent up a conveyor line. Uh, the, the picture on the far right is a picture of our students who are actually sorting recyclables on our sort line. Those materials are then dropped down into a bunker below them. The next picture is a, is a picture of our bunker that's been opened up with all of the, this looks like PET bottles um, uh, that are spilling out. Uh, those materials are then pushed onto a conveyor. And then the last picture there with the gentleman with his arms spread out is, is a representation of some of the bales of material uh, that we produce. Those bales weigh around 1,200 to 1,400 pounds. Uh, those are loaded onto semi-trailers and then shipped off to manufacturers uh, where we, uh, so, uh, we sell them at that point. Uh, again, we sell those uh, like commodities. Commodities are bought and sold um, on a regular basis, day-to-day -day basis. Um, those materials are then sent to manufacturers as feedstock to replace virgin materials. I think a really good example is our cardboard. We collect nearly 3 million pounds of cardboard annually from campus. That material is sold to West Rock, a company down in Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, they put it in a uh, water slurry uh, that breaks the, the cardboard fibers. They pull out any contaminants that are in it, like the packaging tape. Uh, then that um, slurry slowly makes its way through a whole bunch of uh, large uh, uh, pieces of equipment where it, it slowly um, extracts the water from it, and it turns it into paperboard, cardboard, and other packaging materials. So if you go to a store here in the area, it's most likely that some of the cardboard that you're recycling here on campus is actually back on the store shelves um, as paperboard products, as cardboard shipping, packaging material, oftentimes those displays that you see at a grocery store that may hold like Keebler cookies or something, the display that it's made out of um, very well could have been made uh, by Westrock in Battle Creek. 
Uh, in academic year 2021, we recycled about 11 million uh, pounds of material. About 5.25 million of that was diverted from the landfill. Uh, that is, it was either recycled, um, was surplus material, or uh, was sent uh, out as organic waste to be composted. We estimate it saves us about 265 trips to the landfill and about $65,000 in landfill tipping fees savings. We do have a campus diversion rate that we're trying to reach. We've set ourselves a 70% uh, goal of uh, taking items uh, away from the landfill. A diversion rate is the percentage of material that's redirected from being landfilled through either uh, composting, reuse, or recycling. You can see we've made steady progress uh, since we started tracking this in 1990. We're up to 44%, so we're making good progress. Uh, we still have a little ways to go though, but we do have 19 buildings that have achieved this 70% diversion goal, and we've got 47 buildings that have diverted over 50% of their waste. So how can you recycle at MSU? There's lots of opportunities for you to recycle. Um, these listed here are areas on campus where you can recycle. All of our buildings on campus have hallway recycling stations. Uh, we have recycling at our residential halls, uh, campus building loading docks, public recycling drop-off center, and at special events as well. And I'll talk about each of those. So our hallway recycling stations, uh, we offer office paper, mixed paper, paper, and then plastic and metal. Um, our office paper includes things like copy paper, notebook paper, one thing to note, um, copy paper can be any color. Oftentimes people think of office paper as only being white. It doesn't necessarily have to be white if you have colored office paper or copy paper rather. Our mixed paper includes things like catalogs, packaging, junk mail, magazines, directories, those type of things. Uh, our plastic and metal, we combine into one container. We're typically limited in space for our hallway station. So we try to combine some things. So our plastic metals combined uh, please note that we only accept plastic bottles and tubs, and I'll talk about that separately a little bit later. Uh, but we also, in that category, also uh, accept aluminum cans, tin cans, and tin foil. And then finally, uh, cardboard can be placed at your hallway uh, recycling station with some stipulations. If you have a couple small boxes, small amounts, you can flatten them and place them next to those bins. But if you have larger boxes or larger amounts, we ask that you take them down to the loading dock where we accept them there. Our residential student housing, uh, much of the same material is collected uh, in addition to uh, glass and cardboard. Uh, so our residential halls, if you're in a, you know, a, a dorm room, you can use a small bin for personal recycling. Then you can empty it into one of the public recycling stations uh, in one of the dorms. You know, each of our buildings um, has space constraints. Our buildings are set up very differently. They were, uh, most of our on-campus housing is very old. Um, so space is a challenge for us. So we have lots of different setups. Um, there is no one consistent setup uh, because of space constraints we have. And the pictures on the right just show a couple of different ones there. So how we collect, you know, the cardboard, the plastic metal, office paper, and mixed paper. Our building loading docks. Uh, we, this is where we consolidate all the hallway materials throughout the building. We also have a larger cardboard, uh, what we call a front load container. It can take up to eight yards of cardboard. Some places even have compactors for cardboard. Uh, this is also where we collect some of the uh, more unique items like polystyrene. Um, all of, again, all of that hallway recycling that you see in the buildings is taken down to the loading dock. Uh, please take that cardboard if you have large amounts down to the loading dock and place it in the container there. This is where we also take toner from department printers uh, that can be brought to the loading dock. There should be a space designated on the loading dock for that. And then in some select buildings that regularly generate large quantities of some of our, what we call non-standard recyclables, things like polystyrene or glass bottles and jars. In some of these buildings, we do are able to offer that service as well, but we're limited on space and loading docks. So there's lots of space considerations as to what we can accept there. We also do recycling at special events. Um, please look for the recycling bins, particularly at, uh, if you're going to the game this weekend, um, other major events on campus, we have lots of 5K runs, charity runs, we have weddings, we have all sorts of things that we provide uh, trash and recycling service for. So please take a look for the recycling bins next time you're on campus at a special event. Um, for these, we collect things a little bit differently. We collect single stream, which means that all recyclables are placed in a single bin uh, because we simply just don't have enough bins to place out on campus. For example, this weekend at the football game, we'll have well more than 300 recycling bins located in the stadium and around campus. 
Um, if we were to try to separate all the materials, we'd, we'd need between 1,000 and 2,000 bins and the manpower to, to put that out. So it's very difficult to, to do source separated recycling. Uh, we do single stream recycling for events only. We would ask that you please consult the signage for the acceptable items uh, if you're at a special event venue. So for example, um, in Spartan Stadium this weekend, the containers that are inside the stadium kind of geared towards the concession items that we can recycle. Whereas if uh, the containers that we have outside are more geared towards those drink bottles and things that are generated outside. Here's a great example of what we did recently at the Youngstown State football game. We recycled over 600 pounds of water bottles just from the stadium. I know 600 pounds doesn't really sound like a lot, um, but water bottles you know, weigh a fraction uh, of uh, a pound. And so there are literally thousands of bottles that we collected from the stadium and we're able to recycle those. We also have our public drop-off center um, that is located at our facility. It's free and open to the public seven days a week with a couple of exceptions. We do have to close each weekday morning because we have to service these large, what we call roll-off containers. So we bring in a truck, it lifts the whole container and removes it and takes it into our material recovery facility where we empty it and it's brought back. And that's um, a, a situation where we don't want the public around when we're doing that for safety reasons. So we close the drop-off site each weekday morning. We also do Sundays after home football games because we have staff here assisting in the football game cleanup. So we usually service those on the uh, you know six or seven Saturdays or excuse me Sundays uh, throughout the football season that are home games. And then we have some select holidays that were closed. Also, that would be Memorial Day, Labor Day, and Fourth of July. When you arrive to the public drop-off center, please know that we ask that you separate materials into the bins that we have. So we have bins for each of those items listed there. And we ask that you, um, instead of commingling or single stream uh, recycling, we ask that you separate that out. It's very important um, to make our recycling process as efficient and clean as possible. So we accept everything from newspaper to plastic bottles and tubs, to milk jugs, to cans, and to books. And because we offer such a wide variety of items for recycling, it's one of the more well-used uh, public drop-off centers in the mid-Michigan area. Uh, we do collect at the drop-off center about 1.2 million pounds uh, in 2021, averages about to 100,000 pounds every month. And you can see from the chart there that our um, slowest time of the year is probably not too surprising. It's January and February when the weather is coldest and nastiest and people tend to hold on to their recyclables until the weather starts getting back and you can see how it bumps back up in, in March and April and in May again. So. So I wanted to dig a little bit more into plastic recycling because plastic can be confusing, especially with the changes we've had to make uh, both during COVID and since then. Uh, and I wanna let you know that we only accept plastic bottles and tubs right now. Why? Uh, because bottles and tubs are the most readily recycled plastics on the market. There is a strong and consistent market for these materials and has been for many years. And we only want to accept plastic items that have a high likelihood of being turned into recycled material. Um, that recycled material is then um, turned into um, products that can uh, replace virgin materials and are used in the manufacturing process. Uh, this changes because of some of the transparency in, uh, throughout the system. If you followed recycling trends lately, um, several years ago, China uh, discontinued accepting a lot of plastics from the United States which caused us to really take a close look at the, the plastics that were uh, readily recycled. Uh, and so we ended up making this change uh, once the pandemic was done and we were back up to full staffing. Uh, we made the change to go to just plastic bottles and tubs. Uh, there are some things that we really want you to look out for when you're recycling and make sure that you don't recycle in our program. Things like clamshell containers. Those are those containers that you get um, when you go to the grocery store and uh, buy fruit, so strawberries, blueberries. Those are called clamshell containers. Uh, also to-go kit cups that you might get from fast food restaurants, takeout containers, plastic bags, and cutlery. And I did want to touch on plastic bags really quick because there actually is a pretty good market for plastic bags. But unfortunately, once plastic bags come into a material recovery facility like ours, they're downgraded because they typically um, are, are getting commingled with other materials. And they get, um, you know, if there's a little bit of soda left in a bottle, they get that soda on them, or they might get a little bit of food residue. And it significantly decreases um, the reuse reusability and, and recyclability of that plastic bag. So we strongly encourage you to consider 
utilizing one of the many take back programs in the area through retail outlets, um, Kroger, Meyer, Lowe's, um, Fresh Time, um, all of those places have uh, plastic bag take back programs. Uh, and many of them take back even more than just, you know, the grocery bags that come from their store. I know Kroger, for example, takes things like Ziploc bags, they'll take shrimp, shrink wrap, they'll take the over wrap from, say, um, water bottles that you might buy in bulk. So um, please consult uh, their websites to see what they take, and it's because they're a great resource to recycle plastic bags. So I want to talk a little bit about how you can be sure that you're recycling right so that you know that the materials that you're bringing us um, are the ones that we um, are able to recycle. So please, again, read the sign on the bin if you're coming to our drop-off center or you're at a sporting event. Make sure you know uh, what goes in the bin and what doesn't. Uh, you can review the recycling guidelines we have on our website. Uh, you can utilize the research tool on our website as well. You can message us on FaceTime, uh, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and also recycle us, uh, or excuse me, um, send us an email at our recycling website um, or call us at our phone number listed there. Again, you know, please review the recycling guides. This is an example of them. If you go on our website, this is what you'll see. Uh, we have listed the commodity, what materials are accepted and what are not accepted. It's a pretty comprehensive guide. So you can, you know, look through the you know, office paper and it'll tell you all, the, all of the types of office paper that we accept and those that we don't accept. And then our research tool, you can go in and, and simply um, click um, on this, um, type in the type of material you want to recycle, and it will give you some guidelines on how and where to recycle those. Uh, one of the things you want to do too is recycle right. Um, and by recycling right, we mean avoiding contamination. And here's kind of three ones, uh, three areas of contamination that we see a lot. So first of all, you want to rinse or wipe out any recyclables. Um, so that they're free of food and beverage residue. So the, the, the easiest example is that peanut butter jar, right? It's hard to get all that peanut butter out, um, but you really need to put a little bit of hot water in there, get that out, um, because if you don't and there's um, peanut butter residue left on that jar, the manufacturers that buy our products don't want that because that takes them extra time to wash, to rinse, costs them more money, uh, and it's just something that they're going to reject from our load if it's in there. You want to make sure those bottles and jugs are clean. Um, also remove extra packaging like polystyrene or plastic shrink wrap. The picture at the top there, you know, those are cardboard boxes, but they're wrapped in shrink wrap. The way that is right now, that is something that's a contaminant, it's not recyclable. So our staff, if we had the time, as those materials were going across our line, we could pull that shrink wrap off. But oftentimes we're, we're, things are moving too fast and we simply don't have the time. So in that condition right there, they're not really recyclable. Uh, also, a good example is our corrugated boxes. We often get corrugated boxes that are still filled with styrofoam and other types of packaging material, bags, um, zip ties. All that stuff should be removed uh, because it does not um, belong in the box and we can't recycle it with the box. And then finally is our one that we kind of chuckle about. We see these, what we call, we call these turduckins. These are um, people that fill a container with plastics, uh, other types of plastics inside. You can see the simply orange bottle there is filled with, it looks like straws and other plastic in there. In that form right there, that is not recyclable for us. Again, that's something that we'd have to pull off our line, take the lid off and then fish those materials out. Um, and it just makes it too difficult for us and the amount of volume that we're processing to be able to do that. So in that form, that would something that would be thrown away, which is unfortunate because certainly the, the, the Simply Orange bottle is something that we could recycle. Another thing you need to do is avoid uh, what we call wish cycling. That's placing an item in the recycling bin, hoping or wishing it will get recycled. Um, it's, you know, wish cyclers have good intentions and that's great, but um, disregarding our guidelines really hinders the success of our recycling program. Specifically what it does is it increases our sorting costs because we have to sort out items that are not recyclable. And not only do we have to sort those things out, but we have to pay to have them sent to a landfill for disposal. So it's a really a double whammy for our program when you're recycling things that shouldn't be in the bin. Um, so we really strongly encourage you to understand and know it before you throw it in your recycling bin. Know what it is that we can recycle, how it needs to be prepared, uh, and that will greatly help us out. So some things to kind of help you along and, and help you keep up the good work that you're doing. Uh, one of the things is make recycling as convenient for yourself as possible. Uh, we have the ability to send you recycling boxes, bins, signs, and labels if you need to. Uh, we have a community reuse program. 
Um, we have a uh, SSRC newsletter, and then we have a, something called a Waste Warriors program, and I'll touch on each of these. So the MSU Community Reuse and Recycling Program um, is an opportunity for faculty, staff, and students to bring us some of those hard to recycle items, in particular things like polystyrene and electronics. You can bring those to the surplus store uh, weekdays from 8 to 3.30. Uh, I ask you to please review our guidelines on our website for our community reuse days. Some electronics, there is a disposal fee. So for example, monitors, um, because many of those have leaded glass in them, we have to spend, send them to a special recycler that can handle that leaded glass. And so there's a cost and we have to pass on that cost. Um, polystyrene is another one. There's certain things um, that are uh, very similar to polystyrene that aren't. We also can't take packaging peanuts. So we really need you to look at those guidelines and see how polystyrene, what it is that we accept for polystyrene and how it should be prepared. Of course, departments can always donate um, or send us their um, uh, items that they're no longer want or need uh, that is purchased by MSU. You can submit an online request for pickup of large items, um, small items that can go through campus mail, you can send that way. And once again, faculty, staff, and students can also send us their personal items. So items from home, um, we have a list on our website of the things that we can accept. Um, you can bring those to the surplus store, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Again, please check our website for what items we accept and which ones we don't. So I talked about making recycling convenient. One of the ways you can do so is with our um, personal recycling boxes. Uh, we have a couple different ones. Uh, you can get these, what we call under desk boxes uh, for mixed paper, office paper, plastic, land, little mini landfill bin. So you can turn your old landfill bin into a plastic metal recycling container if you'd like. But these are a great way to have recycling right at your fingertips. I have them underneath my desk here at work. Um, and probably only about once every two or three months do I have to actually empty these in the hallway recycling stations. Uh, just note that these will not get serviced by custodial. This is something you have to do but it prevents you from having to get up on a regular basis and take your recycling out to the hallway station. Then we have these little bit larger ones too, because oftentimes tucked in um, office areas will have copy machines or um, maybe a small break room um, that's not um, serviced by custodial. And you can get these a uh, little bit larger bins uh, for a larger volume that might be generating again by like a copy machine and you can use those. So those are a great way to um, kind of boost your recycling and make it convenient for you. You can um, go to our website and shop for these. Um, you can shop, uh, click on the shop tab at the upper left corner or scroll down on our main page for a list of products. Um, here's what the website uh, that would look like. Again, you've got the personal waste diversion bundle on the left-hand side, that's free. We'll send those to you, we'll drop them off or send them through office mail. We have the common area ones that are free also. And then we do have um, the, the, the containers that you will see in your hallway recycling. You can purchase those through us if you have a space that you really want one of these hard plastic containers. Uh, there, there is a cost for those because we have to purchase those and there's a, so there would be a cost and you can check with us on what that is. But please note if these are not in a hallway um, area, custodial most likely would not um, service these for you. It's something that you would have to empty yourselves and get out to the hallway stations. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about waste wares as well. Uh, waste wares is a great way to connect with our um, surplus store and recycling center staff um, to help cultivate uh, those waste reduction practices and you can promote those to your peers. Um, you can choose, waste wares can choose to manage, you know, the kind of the office collection points that you have and help us um, help you reduce waste in your areas and, and improve the convenience of some of our non-standard recycling and reuse services like styrofoam, or how to donate office supplies as well. It's a great program uh, that you can take advantage of. And then all are welcome to subscribe to our education outreach newsletter. It's a great way to get roundup of tips, event uh, invitations, program updates, and some kind of cool behind the scenes look at really how we manage MSU's waste as a resource. We're looking forward to, we're getting a, a piece of robotic sorting equipment uh, being installed in our material recovery facility very soon. So that'll be a really interesting piece that'll probably go in one of our upcoming newsletters as well. So just to conclude, you know, you can feel good about recycling here at MSU. Uh, when you put accepted items in your recycling bin, you're gonna know that our department is gonna efficiently manage that material as a resource. Uh, and we're gonna do everything we can to keep it out of landfills and divert it from going there and really make that a resource for businesses here in the state of Michigan and in our region. 
So thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you about recycling today. Uh, before we get into question and answers, I did want to let you know that you can enjoy a 15% off coupon if you've attended the town hall today. The code there in red can be used. Um, please note it is case sensitive. It's valid today through October 20th, um, 2021. It's applicable for online or in-store purchases. Um, so with that, um, we do have an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, either Chris or myself can answer them. If you're joining us on Zoom, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to submit a question. Uh, questions are also welcome from viewers. If you're, if you're attending on Facebook Live, just please write any questions in the comment section for us. With that, I would uh, welcome any uh, questions or comments you have. All right, thank you, Dave. We've got a couple of questions that have come in so far. Uh, Sandra wanted to know, she had a curiosity question. With the, you, you showed the picture of the uh, plastic bottle bale from after the game. How do the bottles not just fall apart and fall off the ends? How, how does it stay together? Sure, so that our, our baler, so we, so we send the materials, we have something called a horizontal ram baler. It's basically a big ram uh, that smashes all those bottles, compacts them together, and in combination with that, we have something called a wire tie. So we put wire ties, um, several wire ties around that bale to hold it together. And, and the bales really keep the material um, squished together and compacted. And that's how we send those, uh, load them onto a truck, weigh them, load them onto a truck and send them to you know, the processors that turn those uh, bottles into new materials. Um, uh, we, could you put the last slide back up, please? I think that had the, uh, um, oh, probably for the coupon code. We will be sending out a follow-up email that will have the coupon code in it as well later on today. Uh, so you will get that in your email. Um, yeah, did you want me to share that again, Chris? Yeah, if you just put it up real quick, that'll. Sure. Just give me a minute here. Yeah. Oops, hold on. While Dave is doing that, I'll just uh, touch on what he was talking about the turduckins and the not having time to fish out the individual pieces. Um, it's estimated that our sorters working in the sort line touch an estimated 14,000 items uh, every time while they're working a day. So with 14,000 different products going by, they don't always have the time to stop and uh, work on a specific bottle when there is other things coming by that they need to attend to. So it's a very fast paced environment. And when things are contaminated like that, it's not always um, efficient to stop the whole process for one item. Um, yeah, there's the, the uh, coupon code. Uh, like I said, it will be coming back out in an email that we will send out to you later today. And uh, it's valid through October 20th. And then um, we, the 21st of October is when we're actually gonna have our next town hall. It's gonna be on IT and data destruction. Uh, so how we handle all of the technology on campus that comes in as well. So with that, I'm gonna go back to the questions. We've had some more that have come in. Uh, Dave, we've got a, uh, kind of a longer question here. It's about landfill bins and buildings. Uh, when I worked in East Fee, we were given landfill bins to keep in our office, the small black containers. I moved over to radiology uh, academic offices last year and we don't have those landfill bins and custodial is still emptying trash cans that are left in the hallway. I'd rather have the landfill process, landfill bin process and kind of do my own version of that. Is there a reason that this isn't everywhere, that there isn't a consistent, just the mini landfill bin process in all buildings? Yeah, it's a good question. It, it is a voluntary program. So we do work with our custodial staff, you know, around campus and they've been very supportive, but there are still some areas that don't have this. Um, you know, you certainly can get these, uh, you can order these directly from our website and have it for yourself. But I would, you know, bring it up to your uh, custodial services, maybe your building manager, uh, and let people know that this is an option for them if they'd like to do it as well. But you certainly can go to our website and order that and we'll get it to you so that you can uh, do it at your uh, convenience in, in your office. Um, do you accept holiday lights at certain times of the year? We do. It's a good question. Uh, if I had my druthers, I would take them all times of the year, but um, we do only collect them, you know, during the holidays when, you know, that's the, the, the time of year when we generally see them, uh, you know, we start, uh, we have a program that starts around, um, you know, right around Thanksgiving time and we take them to about the first or second week of December. Again, that's when most people generate them. It's actually, we've actually tried to expand that program 
um, until after the holidays. But we find that most people, what happens is they, they you know, they go to put their lights up um, in, in, you know, the late fall or maybe around Thanksgiving, and they realize that some of them aren't working. And that's really more so a time when people want to get rid of them. So that's when we've kind of targeted our collection period. And that's at our drop-off center. So you can take them to our drop-off center. We, we don't have um, you know, in building uh, locations on campus where you can recycle them, but we encourage you to bring them to our drop-off center. Got uh, one last question right now from Brian. Uh, he asks that, he says that it seems like computer boxes have plastic and foam glue to the cardboard. Uh, what is the best thing to do with this mixed material? Yeah, I mean, that's a really tricky one. If if it comes into our MRF and the, the material is still glued to the cardboard, unfortunately, it is something that we have to throw away. Um, so if you're inclined and willing to do so, if you can, you know, cut that either that section of that box out, or if you can cut the, you know, the styrofoam off, um, that's great. It can, the rest of the box can get recycled, but if, if there is still styrofoam or other, you know, plastic glued to it, um, then it is not something that we'd be able to recycle. Okay. What if there's tape and label still left on the box? Good question. Tape and labels are not a problem. Um, those can be easily pulled out through the recycling process. So for example, at West Rock, uh, I talked about that slurry. Uh, so when you when they receive our bales, it's an interesting process. Those bales come in, they clip all the wires off um, that hold the bale together, and then they dump it into a, I guess for lack of a better term, a, a great big vat um, that where it's stirred and it slowly starts breaking down those paper fibers that are in there. Um, and, and that's where they have a process. Um, if there's any like plastic tape or labels or things like that, that actually they were, are able to remove those um, contaminants at that point. So leaving those on does not really hinder the recycling process and it's okay. Uh, that is all the questions for now that we've had come in. Um, we can let keep it open for another minute if anyone has any other follow-up questions. And we uh, are also dropping uh, helpful links down in the chat um, for more details about these items that we've talked about. Um, if you have questions about uh, ordering any bins, you can uh, go to our website or you can email us at recycle at msu.edu and we will get to you back there as well. Or you can message us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. We stay pretty act try to stay pretty active on those pages as well. Yeah, and, and just to, to put in a plug for you, Chris, um, Chris is the person who, if you order uh, recycling bins here on campus, Chris is the person that's going to get those ready and get them delivered. He's been very busy this this fall, uh, which has been great. You know, we've had uh, faculty and, and staff that have been away from campus for a long time and have come back and wanted to expand the recycling that they do. And, and having Chris uh, being very busy is a, is a good problem for us to have. So. Um, you know, feel free to order extra recycling bins again through our website. Yep, we try to get a turnaround of about uh, usually two to three days uh, just because campus has been so, so busy. It's slowing down, thankfully now, um, but uh, it, it's been good to, good to have people back on campus. And with uh, no other questions coming in, I guess we can start wrapping it up. So the town hall, uh, the coupon code is still up on your screen. It's valid through October 20th. Um, it's good online. Uh, if you want to come in uh, person in store and shop, we are the surplus store is open on Fridays, 8 a.m. till 3.30 uh, every Friday, but you can also order anytime online 24-7 at surplusstore.com. Uh, if there are no other questions, we can wrap this up and we will see you uh, in October for our next town hall. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great weekend.